Welcome to Backstage with Becca B with special guest Michaela Martinez. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Backstage with Becca B. On this episode, she was on the first national tour of Sister Act. In 2018, she joined the Wicked Tour as a swing understudy for Nessa Rose and an understudy for The Midwife. Now she's part of the Wicked cast on Broadway. Please welcome Michaela Martinez. Well, how's it going? Yeah, I was going to say, anyways, how are you? I'm great. I'm hanging out. I'm, I took a shower. I got ready. I <laughs> curled my hair. You know? Yes. I am. <laughs> you doing well. You're like, I, I, I've gotten a normal start to the day. <laughs> exactly. I have something to, to do to, yeah. to get ready for it. That's always fun. Right? Yeah, I'm, do I'm doing good too. I've been in uh, Texas instead of California because uh, no reason to be in California right now. Yeah, that's so true. Oh my goodness. Is your family in California, friends, okay? Um, well, my family's in Dallas, which is why I'm in Dallas. Great, okay. And then um, I, from what I've heard, they're doing okay in California. I think like some people are trying to like get are trying to like start social distance events. Got sure. it. Interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm very hesitant still about most things. So am I, and a lot of people like around me are getting comfortable, and I'm like, mm -hmm. same, same. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh, uh, I think I'll wait till the last second. <laughs> yes. To like go to a restaurant again. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can never be too too careful. I understand. I understand. Well, so anyways, I kind of started this to like uh, talk with people who probably miss theater as much as I did about theater. So I'll I'll get right into it right now. Yay. Uh, so you, you were on tour with Wicked for a while. Have you always known that you wanted to be a theater performer? And also now you're on Broadway with them? <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just been something I've always loved. I just, from my most, like one of my first memories was just singing in the car and making up silly songs about wanting to get ice cream or whatever was going outside, going on outside and just like wanting to perform and wanting to make the most of what I was experiencing. And so, yeah, I think it's definitely been something that I was just, like, meant to do. Do you remember any of the song lyrics about ice cream? <laughs> I wish. My parents bring up that story all the time. And I wish that we had had camera phones or something at that time. Yeah. To have caught that because it's definitely a story we always go back to. Like, it was just one day I was really young and I was bored out of my mind. And I, my parents had promised me that we were going to get ice cream. And so as I was slowly losing my mind, I started writing a song about how much I wanted ice cream. And it's just, it's, unfortunately, the song has been lost in, in time, but the memory still holds strong. Yeah, I mean, it could have become a hit, though, if there were camera phones at the time, you know? Exactly. Oh, but honestly, sometimes I wish that I could go back to a time where there wasn't a camera phone. True. Uh, that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> it wasn't social media and all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oof, yeah. But there, yeah, there's pros so. and cons about everything. Always. Totally. And I, I, I agree completely. But there are days when I'm like, I want to shut up and I don't want to interact with anyone online. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. but, but other times, like you said, it's such a nice way to connect to your friends and to connect to the world. So, especially now. <laughs> especially now. Yes. Yeah. No. And then, then uh, <laughs> speaking of getting into theater, do you remember the first theater show you ever saw? Do you remember what the was? first Broadway show I ever saw was Hairspray. Ooh. And I was sitting in like row Z, just in the way, way back. But I was so overcome with awe and emotion and just that moment of like this is what I have to do for the rest of my life it was so fun to watch it was just a feel-good musical and ended up being the first musical that I ever did professionally in LA so it was just a really full circle moment 
I love those full circle moments. There's so many of them that happen that like, it's kind of crazy the way it happens. Agreed. And the same thing with Wicked. It's, I had, I'd wanted to be in that musical from the moment I heard Defying Gravity on my Walkman when I was, oh God, how old was I? Sixth grade, maybe. I was hooked. And I just thought, if I'm going to do this with my life, I have to get into Wicked at yeah. some point. And thank God it's lasted for 16 years because it gave me enough time to actually fulfill that dream. Um, that doesn't happen very often. So I'm very grateful that it's stood the test of time. But oh, yeah. I auditioned for it so many times and I just, I didn't, obviously the rejection is always difficult. But in my mind, I was like, I'm going to be in this musical. Like, I will do whatever it takes. I will keep auditioning for however many times I have to. This is going to happen for me. So when it finally did, it, that was just a huge moment for me, for my agent, for my family, my friends who've just been supporting me and, and knowing that that was like my one goal was to get into this musical somehow, some way. So that was, yeah. I love that. And you did. And how long have you been with them? Because you've been with, you've been with Wicked a while now. Yeah. So I joined in March of 2018 and uh, I stayed on tour for about two years. And then I would decided I wanted to move to New York because I've never lived in New York. Surprisingly, I've always lived in California. I went to school in California. I got my BFA in California and musical theater. I stayed there. I, I've always sort of been a homebody, so my family's in Arizona, which is about an eight-hour drive, so I just wasn't ready to be eight-hour flight away from them. I, I was more okay with being an eight-hour drive, so I stayed in California for a long time, but I was still able to work and, and have a, amazing experiences, and I booked Wicked in LA, and um, it sort of finally gave me the confidence to be like it's time it's time for you to move to new york and give that a try and right as i put in my notice to leave tour the broadway company was looking for somebody to do the same track that i did on tour on broadway as a filler or not a replacement but somebody was hurt and out so they needed someone to fill in and i i was i was like yes <laughs> they, they asked if i was interested and i was a resounding yes, of course. Are you kidding? I never in a million years thought that that would even be an option. So to be able to move to New York already having a job on Broadway, which is like the ultimate goal of any performer's life, was surreal and incredible in, in every single way. Yes, and I know Wicked fans around the world were so happy when they heard that you got that. <laughs> so. That's really nice. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> the fans are incredible. They're so supportive, and, and I love that. Yes, there, there was a lot of talk about that. <laughs> that Wicked. makes me really happy. <laughs> so, backtracking a little bit, I'm going to get into Wicked, of course, more later. Totally. But... Uh, you mentioned going to going to school in California or on the West Coast. Uh, what was your whole school experience like? So I went to Cal State Fullerton and I decided to go to a state college because I didn't have the money to spend on UC, USC or UCLA. And I knew that I'd still get the experience I wanted um, with this college. And I was right, which was really a nice because you never know when you're going to college, you're sort of just throwing yourself in and seeing how it goes. But I ended up really loving it and learning so much from it. I spent four years there, graduated and stayed in California to start working regionally. But um, yeah, my school experience was great. It was about, I think, 10 of us in my BFA class. So the crazy thing about this was that anyone could join the program freshman year. So it, it ends up being like a hundred people vying for these 10 spots. Since sophomore year, about half of those people leave. Either they drop out because they're like, this is not for me. Or, you know, they just realize that it's just, they want to do something else, which more power to them because this is a really tough yeah. profession. <laughs> um, and so then, Sophomore year, you know, that's when they decide who's going to 
be in the BFA class for junior year and senior year. So somehow I managed to get one of the spots, which I was so excited and thrilled. And I remember that moment. They, what they do is they give you, you go in and you audition, you sing a couple songs, you have like a scene that you do with a partner, you do a dance audition. So it's like this huge moment where you're just like trying to check off all the boxes and, and do your best. And um, once it's all over, there's a day where everyone gets an envelope, this big like manila envelope. And you sort of take it and decide where you're going to go open it just because it, it's very, it's like a life changing moment. You don't, you're either going to be in this class and pursue this dream of yours, or unfortunately you're cut and you have to figure out what you're going to do next. So some of my friends would like go to the park or go to their room or go, you know, somewhere special to them. And I, I think I just went straight to my apartment and opened it and was like, let's just get it over with. I want to see what happened. And luckily I made it. So that was a really exciting moment. And then I, the next two years, just, we did showcases, we did, you know, musicals. Um, I was able to do Footloose, Little Women, Miss Saigon, um, Violet. Um, oh, what else did we do? Those are all I can think of right now, but I'm sure there were more. Uh, and it was just an incredible experience to have the chance to do all of those musicals that are still so special to me. There's such Violet and Little Women are top for me. So I and Miss Saigon obviously was incredible to do, but not really a musical that I'll ever be in professionally. <laughs> But I loved the experience. Um, but Violet and Little Women have always been ones that I've connected deeply to. So it was really neat being a part of them. Yes, and the music in Little Women, oh my gosh. Oh, it's my favorite. And Joe is just the ultimate character. She's everything you want in a woman. And yes. the music she gets to sing, I mean, Astonishing is so incredibly written and it's one of my favorite songs to sing, so yeah. yeah. It's one of, I think, one of the top songs in musical theater. For sure, for sure. And that was when I was introduced to Sutton Foster. It was either that one or, um, oh, what is the other one she's in? What Gimme Gimme's from? Oh, uh, 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 I have the worst memory. Oh my God. I forget. Oh, I, I Thoroughly be. Modern Millie. Thoroughly Modern Millie. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so that yeah. one I think I was introduced to first. And I thought, who is this woman singing so good. and dancing and acting so eloquently and beautifully? And I was hooked. Sutton Foster is one of my idols for yeah. sure. She's, yeah, she's incredible. And then, I mean, I feel like you getting into the top 10 in that program had a lot to do with uh, like you being real rounded in uh, acting, singing, dancing. So how did you work on that growing up? And how did you get to that? I always did theater in high school. My high school had an incredible theater program. So that really was where it started. That's where the seed was planted. I had a just brilliant acting teacher named Mr. Herb, and he loved to teach, and he was so very talented at it and inspiring. And I was, I, I just was able to grow and figure out that I felt most at home on stage, and I felt like I wasn't overthinking everything like I normally do in my life. I struggle with anxiety and perfectionism and depression and all of those things. And so there is a, an element of escape when you're in theater. I'm sure that you know this, both as an audience member and as a performer, where you just get to leave the stuff that's bothering you and the stuff that's holding you back as a human being behind and delve into somebody else. So I think once I figured out that I enjoyed that so much and, and felt such a release um, and so much confidence through it, I was hooked. Yes. Yeah, that completely. Yeah. And then, um, I, I mean, you mentioned that it's such a tough industry. When did you realize that you could handle, like, when did you realize that it was a tough industry? And when did you realize that, yes, like, I can handle this professionally? I think your first big rejection is just really, it's awful and hard. And, and you just sort of get through it because 
you know in the back of your mind that there's nothing else that you want to do yeah. and there's nothing else that you feel more at home doing so no matter how hard and badly it hurts that drive and that need to do what you love so much runs so deep that it doesn't hinder you from continuing but I think I just learned that even though I wasn't getting everything that maybe I wanted or or hoped for that when I didn't get something later on I could look back and say oh but it was because I was supposed to get something else or it was because I was supposed to be available for this experience and like every experience that I've had I do not regret one bit. I have loved every single one and they've all happened when they were supposed to. And so I think there's some sort of just peace in that of knowing that the universe and life happens for a reason. As cheesy as that sounds, that has gotten me through so much rejection because I just know, okay, that sucked and that I poured my heart into that and it just didn't work out. But I know later on I'm going to realize why. Yes. And that keeps me going. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason type, type like mentality. Yeah, for sure. And I know people hate that or some people do, but I've always felt so connected to that thing. It's something that's gotten me through so much. So I, I just keep coming back to it. Yeah. No, I, I feel like I try to, and I need to more actually come back to that <laughs> mentality. For it everything. helps. Honestly, anything to help you get through it is just hold on to that. And that that's always been a comfort for me. So I just keep going back to it. <laughs> yes. And then uh, before I get back into Wicked, pre-Wicked, besides the shows that you mentioned you did in college, what show was your favorite to do and to be a part of? <sighs> okay. So I... It's funny, I was just writing down some of the shows I was doing or have done in the past because I want to put together a reel. So it's good. It's right on my mind. Yes. Um, after Hairspray, I did a new musical called Triassic Park with this incredible theater company called The Chance Theater. And um, we were all dinosaurs and it was epic and really special to be part of a new show. It had, it had yeah run on off Broadway in New York. So it already had opened, but they were still working through things that they found maybe didn't work or, or needed to be added. So they did an LA run to um, finesse it. And my character actually had a song that they wrote for me to perform that they added to the musical, which was, I think every performer dreams of, of having that experience. So that was, really neat and cool to just work with the director and the writer one-on-one -on -one and figure out what worked best for me but also what, what worked best for the character so that was really special um and then after that is when I had I think my most memorable experience thus far aside from Wicked which was Spring Awakening that has always been my favorite musical I'm just so drawn to the music it's I'm not your average classic musical theater lover. I definitely gravitate more towards singer songwriter kind of vibes. Um, so Spring Awakening is right there. It's the music is, it just gets trapped in your head in the best of ways. And I could listen to the album on repeat, just constantly have it in my car. Like I had the CD and I would listen to it whenever I could. And so that was definitely a musical I wanted to be a part of. And, and La Mirada Theater Company was doing a yeah. production where they were having people sit on stage and it was sort of like an, an on stage experience, kind of like what they did on tour where they had people that could buy tickets to sit on stage and watch the production from there, but they just had everyone sitting on stage. So it was an intimate audience experience, which was also an awesome thing to be a part of. Um, but it was just something about the moment in my life, the people I was with, I was able to play Vendla, which was just a dream come true. And the team was very innovative and 
pushed me and I was at an age where I was like desperate to just do everything right. And this director just took me and was like, trust yourself and believe in yourself. You've got everything that it takes. You just need to believe in that. Yeah. And so, yeah, seeing that music and, and being a part of that production, that's one that will always be so, so special and something I'll never forget. And I feel like through talking about uh, the musicals you've done pre-Wicked, you've you kind of like uh, encapsulated like what makes California theater so special too. Because California theater, people don't realize that it's not just TV and film. They're like, yes, it's mostly TV and film in California, but mm -hmm. the theater scene there is also incredible. If you can that's why I stayed for so long because I I just was able luckily to have like you said really great theater experience there that helped me to you know be ready for the big productions like Wicked and I also did Distract that was my first big national tour so yeah I nothing but incredible things to say about theater in LA it's it's what molded me into the performer that I am today so I'm very thankful for it yeah, it's a, it's an incredible scene. Wait, can you talk about Sister Act? Yeah, so um, that was when I got my equity card. I yeah. was, I think, 22 uh, or 23, and they came through LA looking for replacements. And I went to, I can't remember what church it is, but they used to do all their auditions at this huge church in the middle of LA. And that's where I auditioned for Wicked multiple times as well. But um, yeah, so it was kind of funny auditioning for Sister Act in a church. I was like, this is very, <laughs> this is perfect. Um, I feel right at home. And I went in and uh, they were looking for somebody to be in the ensemble as well as cover Mary Robert. And somehow, some way, I managed to land that opportunity and uh, finally got my equity card and went on tour for the first time I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> um and yeah it was it was uh it was something that I will never forget I watched Sister Act the new Sister Act 2 the other day and I was get laughing to myself because it just made me remember how much fun I had the doing that musical yeah yeah the, it's such an incredible music musical for women to be a part of because you're just surrounded by all these powerhouse belters and these powerhouse musicians and singers and you get to just sing for your life every single night and wear a habit and just feel like what am I doing but also having the most fun that you possibly could and initially I didn't know that I was going to cover Mary Robert um I didn't really know what I was doing I was just like well great I'm in the ensemble awesome this is amazing and then I think I was there for a couple months and they needed a new cover and so they proposed to me you know do you want to come in and audition for this and I was like of course and then it worked out and that was just to be able to cover a principal role in a national tour was yeah yeah, something that I never, you know, always hoped for, but was like, not, just didn't see it coming. And so to have that opportunity was really, really incredible. And that gave me my first chance at sort of like mid show swaps or like, you know, I was in my ensemble track and our Mary Robert had an accident and I had to switch from my ensemble part to Mary Robert in the middle of the show. Um, and that was like a really cool experience and very formative because little did I know I would become a swing in Wicked <laughs> and have to do things like that all the time. Yes. It, yeah. And also first national tour, like that's. It was, yeah. And it was right at the end of the tour. So I think I was there for almost a year, but uh, it was the perfect way to sort of have my first uh experience touring the country it's like it and it's a learning experience too it's like maybe this part of tour life isn't what you thought it would be or something like that I think I learned about how not to travel <laughs> how, how, how do you not travel because I need help with that on vacations 
like first thing is four wheels on your suitcases always yes and um no heavy backpacks and like purses and things like I just like I had like my yoga mat which like power to the yogis I love yoga so much but carrying that thing around was was a was a challenge (laughs) and I had a big bag and I had like my suitcase that was not you know helping me in any way it was two wheels and it was just falling apart um but I I was very new to it I was like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed had no clue what I was doing and and very quickly I was I was taught this is what you don't do this is what you do and I'm very grateful for it because it, it helped me the home buddy Michaela who would prefer to stay at home with her family and friends and people she feels closest to to realize you have the ability to live on tour and survive and thrive and have an incredible time so get out there and 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 live your life to the fullest yes and what was uh you mentioned mid-show swaps what was the what was uh your first mid-show swap and do you like remember the day it happened and like what you were feeling that day because I'm sure it's kind of it's kind of like uh what what's happening moment oh totally I'm well for Wicked I remember um with being a swing you're sitting backstage a lot so um I had just finished learning all of my tracks which on tour I believe it's six tracks total something like that six or seven and um one of our girls, the midwife, she didn't feel well in the middle of the show. And you're sitting backstage sort of going over your notes and hanging out. And then all of a sudden you hear over the intercom, um, all, what would they say? I I can't believe I forgot this because it's terrifying when it happens, but it's like, everyone listen up basically um the role of midwife will now be played by Michaela Martinez and so then from that moment on you're like your heart starts racing and you're trying to focus as much as you can on okay where are we in the musical we were we were right about to be in Emerald City so I was like trying to remember what does this person do what prop does she carry how do I get my mic you know and I had my best friend Chelsea Franco who was there playing um Alphabet uh, yeah. uh, standby. And he was reading me my notes and trying to make sure that I knew what was going on and following me around. And then finally I got to the stage. She was like, okay, bye. Have a good time. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> see you later. Like, wish you luck. <laughs> and, and it happened. You know, I the, the one thing I've learned about Mitchell Swaps is that you can't really think about anything, which is actually kind of better for me because I overthink everything. Um, so because there's so much adrenaline and there's no time, you just kind of get thrown in. And what I realized is that all the things that you think are going to go wrong usually don't because your brain is so wired and focused on this one thing that it somehow just makes it happen. And yes, you always make mistakes as a, as a swing. That is one of the major lessons I learned as a swing and a very necessary lesson because as a perfectionist, you understand you don't want to make mistakes. Mistakes equal horrible, horrible self-talk, equal horrible, horrible day feeling insecure about yourself and what you have to offer as a performer, as a person. But the first thing I learned as a swing is you will never have a perfect show ever. Maybe towards the end when you get really good at it and you just used to it and you don't have, you don't put as much pressure on yourself, which I definitely had, which was great. But in the beginning, you're just bound to make mistakes. And most of the time, the audience has no clue that you've made the mistake. It's really just the people around you who are trying to hold in giggles because, you know, you're a new energy, you're a new person that they're not used to seeing in the show all the time. And you've made a funny little hiccup and really you're just bringing joy to the cast. And, and once I realized that and gave myself a break, I found that being a swing is something that I think I will always want to do. 
if I'm ever given the opportunity to be a swing in another show, I would not hesitate even for a second because it's, it's been such a rewarding and life-changing necessary experience for me to have just to kind of put things into perspective and realize that being perfect is not necessary and it's, it, it's impossible. So why, sh why should I have this goal in my life that I'll never achieve? That's silly. Instead, I should just give my best and do my best and, and be able to go to sleep at night knowing that that's all you can do. Yeah. And I'm sure there's moments too where like you maybe mess up something small and you think that everyone noticed and like no one, even people on stage notice. Totally. I would go backstage and I, the first, one of the things that happens is the swings end up um, like admitting to the dance captains that they made a mistake thinking like they probably saw, you know, like that they couldn't have missed that. And I would go backstage and be like, Kelly, I'm so sorry. Or internet, I'm so sorry. I made this mistake. I did it on the wrong count. And they were like, oh, it looks fine to me. <laughs> like, God, that whole number, I was obsessing about the fact that I had to admit that I made a mistake to the dance captains who didn't even notice. So yeah, it, you're, you're very right. Most of the time, it's just you that is giving yourself a hard time. <laughs> and everyone else is just going about their life. <laughs> It's like I messed up on this millisecond of the of this count or something like that. Three hour musical. <laughs> yeah. it, it's like it's the same thing with singing too. Like the amount of times people like come off stage and are like, "Yeah, well," like they get compliments and they're like, "Well, yeah, I messed up on this like millisecond of this song," and I'm like, "When?" <laughs> Performers are so funny. I I love that because I've totally been that person that has a hard time coming out and meeting everybody and seeing everybody thinking like, oh, well, I made this mistake or I did something that I didn't love and, and sort of letting it hinder me from just being excited to be in an incredible musical and meet all these amazing fans. But that's just what we do. We're just so hard on ourselves. Yes. <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's what makes you, it's what makes you all amazing to watch on stage that like you work I, so hard the craft thank you and I agree I feel like um, sometimes it can be really difficult to be that hard on yourself but I think that is part of the drive and the perseverance that is instilled in a performer um because you want to do your best all the time and because you constantly want to improve you are also constantly striving to succeed in this business yes and uh i have to go back real quick do you remember when you talked about uh your audition earlier kind of for wicked but yes. do you remember when you heard that you got the part what, yes. like where you were and what your reaction was oh my gosh my agent stephen drawing he so like i said before he's always known that this has been the main thing for me i always said he's like the first time we met i said what do you want to do what musicals do you want to be in, in First thing I said was Wicked. I'll be the tree in the back. I don't care. Just get me in Wicked some way, some way, somehow. And so he calls me. And this is, I've auditioned for Wicked at this point maybe six times. So it's been a long time. Yeah. Um, and this one sort of felt different because I sent in a video submission. I, they asked me to come to New York, but I couldn't. So I sent them a video submission of me singing three songs, singing um, The Wicked Witch of the East and doing a scene for Nessa. And then I was like, if they really love this and they want me to come to New York, I'll find a way. And instead, they said, okay, so we want you to do the dance audition as well. Um, can you come to Third Street Dance Studio and uh, do a one-on-one -on -one dance audition? And I was like, a one-on-one -on -one dance audition? What does that mean? And my agent was like, you'll be by yourself with a dance partner that they will bring in and a dance captain or an associate dance captain. And I thought to myself, well, <laughs> that will be interesting. 
Um, but how amazing that they are willing to do this for me, to hire this drummer to come in just for me to do a dance audition, to have all these people come together. This feels like maybe this is my moment, but as a performer, prior to auditions, you have to take as much pressure off as you possibly can because the more pressure you put on yourself, at least for me, the worse I do. So I try to just stay calm. And luckily, the guy that they brought in to be my dance partner was someone I was already working with at Disneyland. So I was like, I know you, I see you every day at work. So this already feels like a great start. And, um, and yeah, so I did the dance audition and they put it on tape. And I, I remember I wore this like green Lululemon top, <laughs> just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and sweat my face off, my body off, just trying to give it as much as I could. And went home and was like, well, we will see what happens. And three hours later, you know, I'm waiting, phone, my phone's like this, like, constantly checking it just like okay. just trying to relax and watch friends and eat your you know whatever I was eating just relax and then my agent called me and he never calls me like normally we just email each other um and so I was like okay this, like this may be the moment so I answered the phone and he's like hey Gail and I was like hi <laughs> and he's like um, I just want to check in with you. Like, how did it go? And I was like, you just want to check in with me? How did it go? You never did this. You never call me to check in with me about auditions. But I was like, okay, I'll play this, I'll play this game. And so I said, yeah, it was great. You know, it, it, blah, 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 blah. He's like, it's, it's so crazy that they made you do, you know, this dancing by yourself. And I was like, I know, I just, I'm so glad I got through it and that it's over now. <laughs> And he was like, well, it's even crazier because uh, you booked it. <laughs> and I was like, what? He was like, you booked Wicked. Like, you got it. And I just remember immediately bursting into tears, which is so cliche. It's like what everyone says when their dreams come true. But that's just what happened. You just burst into tears. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he was emotional too, which was really special because, you know, that to be an agent and to fulfill, to be part of the reason why your client is fulfilling a lifelong dream, that's got to be a pretty memorable moment for him as well. So it was just like this really cool, unforgettable moment to have with, with your agent and just with my life. Uh, and yeah, I had a week to get my life together and out to Nashville, Tennessee. And it was a whirlwind uh, of a time to get out of California and, and on tour with Wicked. But I was like, this is what I've always wanted. So I'll do whatever it takes. Let's go. Yeah, you got to tour the country and everything. And I feel like it, I feel like it was good that you mentioned that uh, how many times you auditioned. Because I feel like there's something in the back of people's minds that are like, okay, well, if I don't get this part the first time, then, like, maybe I'm not cut out for it. And it's like, no, people, the things people do that lead up to these huge roles, like, it takes time. Oh, my gosh, totally. I, and I remember hearing other people's stories, especially with Wicked, of them just going in year after year after year after year and just never giving up. Because you just never know what's happening with the cast. You don't know the part that I, the person that I replaced had been there for 10 years. So wow. she, you know, that role, that spot was not available. Um, and I didn't know that. Uh, so I just, but what I did know was, like I said, I knew that I wanted to be in Wicked. And I was just, I was going to audition however many times it took. And just hope and pray to the universe that that dream would be fulfilled. And, and it came true. Yes, it did. Very grateful for that. <laughs> okay, Ed, do you remember the first Elf and Gwenda you ever saw in Wicked? So I saw it in LA, and I think I saw Eden Espinosa, and I don't know who I saw who Glenda was. Maybe um, Ali Mazi was. Okay, yeah. Maybe. I can't remember, but 
what I'll never forget is seeing MK Morrissey and Jenna Claire Moffat playing Elphaba and Glenda on my first night on tour. That was, I, I just, there was something about their chemistry and their bond even before ever getting to know them and spending time with them that was really unique and special to watch so i'm really really like i could not be more happy that they were my first alphabet and glinda yes I, i've heard fantastic things about their chemistry i never got i didn't get to see them together but like the chemistry i heard was amazing it was off the charts it was so natural and and so uh easy to be around and then to see how that also played on stage so well was yeah mk morrissey and jennifer were yes just an iconic duo so in every sense of the word and i'm really yeah happy that i got to be their friends and and to spend time with them off stage and on stage but more so just to witness how much chemistry matters between two lead roles of a musical like it just changes the game so it was really special and i think who who was after that i think we had um Kara Lindsay and Jackie Burns after that, which was also iconic in every way because Kara Lindsay and Jackie Burns are gigantic stars and huge personalities, but so lovely to be around and powerhouses on stage. Yeah, so to do, so to be able to perform um, in LA with them was, I, yeah, I remember being very awestruck by that all happening because that's where I saw Wicked for the first time. So you're back. Yeah, another full circle. <laughs> that's going to be my theme. Um, to be back in that theater and to, to actually be a performer and not an audience member was wild. So, yeah, that was really cool. A whole different view. You're looking into into the audience this time oh, instead of onto the stage. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And we lived in these great apartments right across from the theater. So it was just the best time. And also to be back in LA, you know, where I, my old stomping ground, um, being able to see friends and and see family. It was yeah, it was one of those stops that I'd been waiting for. So when yes. it happened, it was it was really cool. And also you got to do the tour for a bit with uh, Marianne and Aaron, right? Yes. And then we had Marianne and Aaron and they, oh, just like the nicest people in the whole world and the, their voices. I mean, every single Alpha Bun yeah. that I experienced was just, there was nothing wrong with their voices. Nothing. Everything right. Uh, but yeah, Marianne and Aaron were really down to earth people and and just like they just came in and they immediately got along and and immediately went into the show and granted they'd done it before so it wasn't a hard transition for them by any means but you're always you know meeting a whole new family of people who have been living together and working together for years and years so it's really nice when the two leads sort of fit in like perfectly little puzzle pieces and that's how I felt about Mary and Aaron for sure. Yes I, I feel like that whole cast especially like I don't know I feel like the whole time you were on tour the whole cast everyone just like fit together perfectly and you felt that watching the show on stage and that's what made those oh. years of Wicked so special. I'm really glad that you feel that way because I feel that way too so it's it's, <laughs> it's from both sides I love that. Yes. And also, um, so what was your favorite city on tour? Because you were on tour for like, was it exactly two years or? I think it was, I think I was there for maybe a year and 10 months. So okay. almost two years. Um, my favorite stop was definitely LA, like I said, but also I loved Seattle. Seattle was, we were there right at um, summertime. So it was like July 
and it was just like a bustling, fun city. We all found all these great places to go out and, you know, find great food and great people and music and vibes. And I loved the place I was staying and um, just the city as a whole. It's like, it's just a great city and, and the theater was wonderful. So I loved being back there. And also I used to go to Seattle all the time because I worked on cruise ships. And oh. the cruise ship I was working on would dock in Seattle as like their home base for a while. So I would go there maybe every week or two weeks. So it was really cool to be back and sort of living there versus kind of having like, you know, five hours to visit and pick up groceries and go to your favorite brunch place before you leave for whatever place you're going on a cruise. So um, it, was, it was really cool to go back to all my favorite spots and, and explore the city even more. Yes. And I've heard so many great things about Seattle. Like when I ask what people's favorite stop was on tours, it's mostly Seattle. Really? <laughs> it's a common answer. Oh my gosh. Well, there you go. It's, it's a great spot for sure. And I've never been there. So I'm like, oh my gosh, now I ha like, I have to go there. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a spot that you must go to. Like for me, I still have yet to go to Chicago. I can't believe it. Oh. But it's just never been a spot that I've gone to on tour and I haven't gone personally. So for me, Seattle for you and it's Chicago for me. Like I have to go at some point. Bucket list items. Yes. Bucket list items. Exactly. And then you mentioned six, six tracks in the ensemble for Wicked. Yeah. So I think in, on tour it's five ensemble tracks and then Nessa. Okay. So, and then on Broadway it's six ensemble tracks and Nessa. And the difference is, is on Broadway, they have an on-stage swing. And so she's in the show every single night, unless she gets pulled to do a different dance track or singer track. Um, so she's kind of the one that covers a lot of, like, almost all the ensemble tracks uh, for the women. Um, so, but when she's just doing her on-stage stuff, she's the flathead. She's in the opening. She's in Dancing Through Life. She's in um, Witch Hunters. She's in Emerald City. I'm sort of going all over the place, but she's in a good amount of numbers so that she's always in the show, but it's easy to pull her out and put her somewhere else. How long did it take to pick up that, all that? It's funny because the swing tracks on tour and the swing tracks on Broadway are very different. So there was no, like, I couldn't sit back and be like, I've already done this. Yes, I already knew the music. And yes, I already knew the story and, and where this whole thing was going. So that helped me to relax more into it. But it was very much like relearning the entire show seven times. Wow. It was definitely difficult. Um, but I found that once I got to Broadway, I was still nervous for sure. But I think I trusted myself more by that point. And I believed that no matter what, I was gonna get through it. And that seemed to give me a new sense of calm and confidence going into that experience that I'm very happy for because there is a lot of pressure once you get to that point in your career, you know, especially being picked out of tour and thrown into Broadway, you, you want to live up to whatever expectations or reputation you already have, and then some. So coming into it and realizing that I had all the tools and confidence that I needed to get through it took a lot of that pressure off. Yeah, and then you put the pressure, you put pressure on yourself already, like as you mentioned, as you exactly. mentioned before, but like that adds. A little bit too exactly, late. but I, it was really nice to just be like, I'm here, and I just kind of appreciate it. And yeah. I, remember, I think one of the most special moments was my Broadway debut. It sort of with as a swing and not having family that was close enough to get out there. I kind of was like, just let's do it. Let's just. I don't need to have like all the people and all the friends and the family there. Obviously, I would love that. But as a swing, you know, you're not in the show all the time. So it's just harder to plan. But I really wanted to just rip the band-aid off. And so I went and I asked our stage manager and she was like, great. Yeah, let's put you on tonight. 
And I remember going home and getting my food and sort of trying to like wrap my brain around this track that I was going to debut in. And luckily I had just done a put in for her and I felt really confident in this track. And um, so by the time I got to the theater, I was just excited. And it was a whole new feeling when, when you debut on tour, especially when you've never been a swimmer before, which was my experience. Um, I sweat through all of my costumes. I had swing sweats, is what I call them. <laughs> I was inordinately nervous, just out of my mind, scared. So to have to remember that experience and then be coming into your Broadway debut with a sense of I can do this was really. I felt like I'd worked really hard for that. And so I was really happy to, to have that sense of calm and ease coming into some, such a momentous moment. And by the time it ended, I was so excited, but also exhausted and just like overwhelmed. I bawled my eyes out through the entire bow. Like from the moment I got out there, I started crying and then I could not stop. And I remember thinking like, stop, like what is happening to you? Like stop crying in front of all these people because everyone's looking at you because you're the one that's making your Broadway debut and I was by myself. So everyone's, you know, got their eyes on you. And of course they, they have so much empathy and compassion and they love that, you know, I was emotional that didn't bother them at all. But to me, I was like, I don't even know these people that well yet. And I am losing my, my mind right now, but, um, it was just how I felt. It was just like, I have said it, you know, when you, you dream about being on Broadway your whole life as a performer. So then to actually have it be happening is so difficult to wrap your head around. And so I think that was the moment. Like I had finished the show, I was doing my bow and I was just overcome with this sense of like, you, you did it, like you, you actually fulfilled this dream. I, I cannot believe this. And, and as a result, I just cried my eyes out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it came to you on stage, which I mean, I love. That's such like a magical moment. Is, but I, I mean, for the audience to get to witness too, if they, if they see it. Like, that's such a magical moment. I don't know if they noticed, I, but I do know everybody in the cast definitely noticed. And right when the curtain came down, everyone just like, bear hugged me and like dog piled onto me. And I think every single person came up to me individually and gave me a hug and said something kind to me, which was also just the cherry on top of, a, an, of an exquisite experience. Because you're just so lucky when you come into a company that is so welcoming like that when they don't necessarily have to be. Um, and so to feel so supported by them and, and also to feel like a lot of them said it was really nice to see you so overcome with emotion. Like I know for you that might have been uncomfortable, but for us to see you in that place and to kind of like remind ourselves of why we're here and why we're doing this and, and to remember that moment for ourselves, it was just really special to, to witness. So that made me feel better about, you know, all of my waterworks. Um, but yeah, it was just it was something I'll never forget especially and it's so bittersweet now having had that experience and then having this pandemic happen I I know for so many people that haven't gotten to fulfill that dream yet this is a really scary time because you're not sure we're just not sure what's going to happen and yeah. so I'm just even more grateful that I actually was able to have that experience before just this wild, crazy moment in our, in our time and in our world happened. Yeah. It's, ho hopefully everything will get back. Hopefully theater will come back soon. But yeah, that's the I, mean, I cannot imagine a world without theater. So oh. you know it will come back at some point, but it's very, it's heartbreaking at this point for sure. Yeah. And then, um, what's your favorite track to cover on, is it the same on tour or in Broadway, or uh, do you have different favorite tracks on tour in Broadway? Ooh, okay. I mean, obviously I love Nessa. That's always yeah. going to be very close to my heart, but 
ensemble wise, um, I always love doing the fainter track, which the reason why they call her fainter is because she faints when she sees Elphaba for the very first time in Chiz. Um, <laughs> four, that was my very first track that I did my put in for, that I debuted in. And so that track became really special to me because I just felt really comfortable in it, sure of myself, and I was able to have fun and just kind of go go along for the ride. And I think the same thing was with my track that I debuted on in Broadway, which that track is called Cupcake. Um, and it's a little different. And it's funny because she wears costumes that uh, Fanny wears on tour. So it's all a little different. Um, but in Emerald City, she wears the same track the same costume that Fanny wears on tour. So it's like the cupcake dress and that's why they call her cupcake on, on Broadway. And that's, uh, that track also is the um, Alphaba understudy and she sings No One Cries, They Won't Return in the opening, which is a great solo. Yeah. That's, yeah, it was, and, and on Broadway they have these balconies that you can sort of like hang over and like climb up, which is, a, that was another thing I loved about Broadway. The set is just like mind-bogglingly gorgeous and amazing. And it is that way because it doesn't have to go all over the country. So they, you know, can have bridges that move and they can have balconies and um, just make it a, a more 3D theatrical experience. So that solo, she's sitting on a balcony and she's over everyone and she has this like ribbon and it just feels like this really epic moment and the audience is like looking up at you. And um, so I think that will always be my favorite ensemble track uh to do on broadway for sure well uh, yeah the sets on broadway are been like it's so weird going like seeing the tour so many times and then going and singing on broadway and being like oh there's actually like sets like yeah. like the bridge that moves up and down that people stand over it just sort of creates this like the pictures that it creates are yeah are so so, I don't know, as an audience member, I was like, wow, they're just like all around you. Um, which is, I know the tour obviously wishes that they could do that, but, um, but to see the differences was really cool. And then uh, you mentioned Nessa too, which I have to ask about Nessa. Um, so when was the first time you ever went on as Nessa? And when I, do the swings cover Nessa always, or was that, uh, just something that you got kind of like thrown into. I believe that they prefer this, this swing to cover Nessa always. So that I knew I was going to do when I booked it. Um, and the first time I went on was in San Antonio, Texas. Everyone got the flu. Just everyone got wiped out. And uh, we have creative visits every so often, which means like the associate director comes, the associate choreographer comes, sometimes the music, Stephen Aramis, who wrote all the music, or not the music, didn't write the music, but oversees the music, he will come out and watch the show. Um, and, you know, various other people, just to make sure that everything's going well and to work with the crew, to work with the crew and the cast. Um, and it is always very nerve wracking when they come because you just want to do your best and sometimes you know things go wrong and you're just praying to God that everything falls into place in the way that it's supposed to especially when they're watching so unfortunately Nessa got the flu right when the creatives had come and I had never gone on for Nessa other than a foot in I had never worked with MK as Nessa. I'd never worked with Jenna Claire as Nessa. I'd never worked with any of the principals. And our stage director, our stage manager texted me because I had found out that Millie was out and I was sort of like waiting to see what was gonna happen because there, there were other Nessa covers so easily that could have happened and I would have been you know, in the clear, but my stage manager texted me and he was like, you're ready and you're gonna do it. And I know it's nerve wracking to have these people here that you wanna live up to their expectations, but you're ready. So let's do this. And I was like, okay, let's do this. Um, and I um, got to the theater early and I worked with the 
uh, wheelchairs a couple times to make sure that I felt comfortable and I ran through the lines and 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 then I just kind of went for it. And I think I'm really happy that it happened that way because um, as nerve wracking as it was, I didn't have any other choice but to be as present and in the moment as possible because I needed to be as aware of these people that I've never worked with before and as connected to them as possible in order to give our creatives the experience that they wanted and deserved. So that made for a performance that I felt really proud of. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just like one of the most special nights ever. I, I remember at the end of it, I was, I was lying on um, MK's dressing room floor, just like, <gasps> I can't believe I just did this. And she was like, you freaking killed it. And just taking a big sigh of relief and, and feeling like I was on top of the world. I uh, did that really just happen moment. <laughs> yeah, I really just pulled that off. <laughs> and, and yeah. That was What's your, uh, what was your favorite part of going on as Nessa throughout the tour? So I think one of the craziest times was I was on for, uh, on tour. I was on for Umbrella, which is the Alphabet Undersons track. And uh, I had done her for the first act and Amanda wasn't feeling well and ended up calling out mid-show. So I, we weren't at intermission yet, but they were, they were like, you're done with Umbrella, like go get ready for Nessa. And so I took off all my ensemble stuff and took my hair out of pin curls because you know, you have to use your hair. And they're like combing through it and trying to make sure it looks okay. And, um, and then obviously they put it in a bun, so it ends up being fine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just sort of like running up to the dressing room and, and getting ready and, and switching gears completely. <laughs> so having that experience is always really jarring, but at that point I'd been on tour for so long that I, I was sort of like excited to have this moment of like switching from an ensemble track to a principal track mid-show. Um, and also getting to do the best scene with Nessa, which is the actor scene, just getting to jump right in and do it, which is like, you know, an actor's dream. So yeah, it was, that was probably one of my favorites. And that happened in um, St. Louis, which was my last stop on tour. So I kind of, and I got to do it with Matt Densky, who I had not gotten oh. to do Nessa and Bach with ever. And we thought that'll never happen. And it ended up happening. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh my goodness. And, okay, I have to ask because I have feelings about this. How do we feel about Wicked Witch of the East not being on the cast album? <laughs> I'm so sad about it. I'm so sad about it because it's such an awesome moment for her. She's sort of like this forgotten character in the soundtrack. You don't even realize that this is even there. Um, so, but obviously I understand why they took it out from that because it would, you know, ruin a, a pretty, solid secret that, you know, they want to keep the audience to find out. So I, I understand it, but yeah, I wish that, that it was part of the soundtrack for sure. It's such an epic song and like, <laughs> it's, the yeah. it's her moment. Yeah. yeah. But um, I remember when I first started, started auditioning, I just went on YouTube and watched, you know, YouTube video after YouTube video of all these Nessas and was able to definitely get a feel for what it, what it was supposed to be like and how it was supposed to sound, so, yeah. I don't, when you, you'll find a way, but, but yes, yeah. I, I remember, what is this? Because I listened to the, the album religiously. I loved it. And so then to be like, what's Wicked Witch of the East? I've never heard this song. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, and then, uh, before we move on from Wicked, what's your favorite ensemble scene or dance scene in the show? Hmm. I think I love Emerald City because it's just like this huge moment where the entire cast is all just like doing all these random things and in these gorgeous, stunning costumes. Um, and it's really fun being on stage with everyone at the same time. 
I think any moment when you can share a number with literally every person in the musical is going to be special. Um, but yeah, I loved doing that one. I also, strangely enough, really loved Witch Hunters. Uh, I just think it's like anytime I had something that I was upset about or I was feeling some sort of way about, I would just take my, you know, spork out on stage and, and whatever prop I was supposed to be assigned and I would just get all that anger and aggression out through that song. So that was always a nice one to have. And I loved whenever I would go into the midwife, she says, um, good fortune witch hunters, right when she comes out and it's just like this epic like screaming cry of retaliation and revolt and it's it's epic it's obviously sad for you know its place in the musical and, and how they they feel about Elphaba but as a as a performer in it it was always a nice way of getting out any any sour feelings I was having that day <laughs> yes and uh what do you think makes Wicked such a remarkable show that like has run for since 2003? I think it's the message that it sends. It's still so relatable today. And it just, every single year that it's survived, I think you just can't help but find something in it, some message, some moment that applies to the way that we are living in our world today. And even more so now, I mean, with all of the racial inequity that we are finally opening our eyes to, it just shows me again how much Wicked pertains to the world that we're living in and sheds light on things that maybe we're uncomfortable, you know, facing, but finally we're in a place in a time where we have to face them. And so whenever we get to go back to Wicked, um, I just can't wait to be a part of that experience and to keep sending that message of, uh, you know, equality and acceptance into the world again. Yeah, it, it's true. It's truly special. It's one of those shows that I feel like it's no wonder why it's gone on for so long and why it's still like as popular as it was in the beginning. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a really special show. And I, I also am really grateful that I know it's going to manage through this pandemic. I know it's going to survive this pandemic. And um, unfortunately, I know that that's not the case with, with a lot of shows. And that is like devastating in so many ways because there's all this creative art that's happening that's having to stop and maybe never see the light of day as a result of this pandemic and so to be able to be a part of a show that I know is going to survive I, I know how lucky I am yes that, yeah that's a good feeling and then uh speaking of special shows what's a role what's a dream role of yours in this show that you like are dying to be in besides besides Wicked obviously um I have fallen in love with Bridge of Madison County, Bridge over Madison County. Yep, Bridges of Madison County, yes. I started listening to it last year and I just think it is one of the most beautiful, stunning musicals. And it just didn't, it got a great moment on Broadway for sure, but I wish that it would have had more of a moment. So I think being in that in any form would be amazing. I think in terms of stuff that's on Broadway, aside from Wicked Now, um, I love Mean Girls. I think it's such a cool, fun musical. And I had the opportunity to see it twice, which I was really grateful for. It was one of the last Broadway musicals that I saw before everything got shut down. Um, I just think it's such a fun show. I would love to, to cover Regina or any of the other Mean Girls or Katie. Katie's music, she is just a powerhouse. She's having to sing all these crazy songs and, and, um, but I, I, I don't know. I'm, always, I'm really drawn to that feeling and that vibe and the way that they presented it. It was a really cool experience. So I would love to be a part of, of that musical as well. Do you have a, this might be a hard question because there's so many great songs, uh, but uh, do you have a favorite song? In that you want to sing? No, the 
like any in any Broadway show that you'd want to sing on stage? Ooh, um, I mean, I'll always come back to this one, but Little Women is a musical that I, I was able to do in college, but I played that, which I loved because Some Things Are Meant to Be is such a heartbreaking, beautiful moment in that show. So I was really excited to have that. But I think astonishing just being able to sing that in, a mus in the musical as Joe and experiencing that song as that character. I've sung it um, at cabarets and at uh, benefits and things, and I've always loved it, but I think it would be even more special to do it in the musical. So, yes. <laughs> one, one day we'll get to hear you sing that in the musical. I hope. I, I hope I don't age out of it, because I, I very well might. <laughs> well, well, if we don't get to hear you sing it soon, then like maybe I need like a cover of it like online or something. I'll just keep singing it in all the benefits and cabarets I possibly can. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. I need to hear I need to hear you sing it in some in some way. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen. And then uh what's something uh that maybe wasn't funny at the time but like you can laugh about now that's happened on stage to you. Oh my gosh. So I was debuting in one of my ensemble tracks for the very first time. It's uh, the name of it is Shen Shen. She's one of the mean girls that's friends with Linda. And uh, I had a really quick change from the end of the opener into Shiz. Uh, and somehow I didn't take off my opening hat, which the swing costume wears this huge like Chiquita banana cabbage hat is what we would call it. It's like purple and it's got all these layers and, and it's very flowery and it's very hard to miss. And I wore that hat with my shiz outfit, which you know, the, the blue and white, very yeah. collegiate outfit. I came out on stage with my purple hat on. And what's even worse about this is that Shen Shen and Fanny, they come out at the very back of the stage and they meet center and they hold hands and then they walk down center and run into Elphaba. So there is literally no way I can hide the fact that I am wearing this ridiculous hat in a number where nobody else is wearing their ridiculous opening number hat. And I remember MK turned around and saw me and clocked me and was like, huh? And <laughs> Bailey is like peeing her pants laughing because she can't believe that I somehow managed to get on stage. Like that nobody grabbed my hat. Like nobody like stopped me or, or I, I guess the dressers were like screaming at me. Like, okay, you have your hat on. Oh my God. I was like zoned in, like, trying to like make this mark and like not miss this change and not miss this moment. And uh, I ended up ripping this hat off. And right before Glinda comes out from stage left on her, you know, suitcases, I threw it into the wing hoping I, was, I would miss Jenna Claire coming out and not like whack me in the head with that. <laughs> that would just been a whole nother level of embarrassment. And for the rest of the scene, Allison like couldn't look at me. She was laughing so hard. And I just remember being like, stop laughing at me. Like, what is wrong with you? And she, and the rest, and I remember looking around and seeing other people just <laughs> holding in laughter and, and being so, <laughs> just shocked that I managed to do that um but I remember texting the girl that I replaced and I was like so have you ever done this before and she was like oh honey I've done this 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 and this don't you worry it's fine like we all make mistakes but in the moment it's mortifying but it has now become one of my favorite swing you pulled a Glinda with the hat and with the, like, how she does with the wand during popular, you pulled the Glinda with the hat and... <laughs> and oh, God, it was awful. I'm so, I'm just, I'm glad it didn't whack her in the face. That would have just been awful, but yeah, now it's, it's really funny to look back on. She's been like, where did the hat come from? <laughs> That's not part of the thing. It or what it hit, but it got off stage and that was all I cared about. <laughs> I mean, I I have to watch when people throw things off stage, like, even if it's, like, part of, like, the scene, I, I'm i always interested to watch, because, like, if you're on the far side of, the, like, the in the front rows, you can see, like, where it goes, and, like, people catching it backstage. 
I hope that somebody witnessed that in, in the audience. I hope that someone caught that and was like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. I wish that somebody actually realized what was going on, which I'm sure there was like a fan or somebody who was like, that doesn't look right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a pretty epic moment for me. And it was one that people laughed about for a while, which, you know, if you can bring joy through your suing mishaps, then that is the ultimate goal. And I brought a lot of joy that day. <laughs> okay. I, no, I can imagine. I mean, in Fresno, I think uh, during the popular scene, I was like on the side opposite of where the wand gets thrown off. And I watched Aaron throw the, throw the wand off stage and someone backstage like dived for it. And I was yeah. cracking up the rest of act one. <laughs> so yeah. if, if you all heard me, if y'all heard someone laughing the rest of Act One from them, like that was me. That see, that number is not only funny because it's funny. It's funny because there's things flying through the air and people diving to catch them backstage. It's That's just a great thing. Keep it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then um uh what if you could revive any Broadway show that uh close to you soon, what would it be? Parade. Oh, I've gotten that answer before too. I've gotten a lot of parade answers. Yeah, I would love to see parade. Honestly, I saw someone post this the other day, uh, reviving Legally Blonde, which I know it hasn't been gone for that long, but that musical is so good. It's yeah. one of my favorite musicals. Such catchy music, um, incredible orchestration, hilarious storytelling. I would love to see that again. But I think, oh, what is the other one I want? <sighs> Can't remember now. Audra McDonald was in it. Um, and she sings a song about burying her child in the ground. I literally just listened to it. But that's another uh, one. Let me figure out what it's called. Because I gotta say it because it would be an incredible musical to revive, especially right now with the story that it tells. Um, Audra McDonald. You should cut this part. <laughs> no, I love it. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, well, Audra McDonald has been in so much. <laughs> oh my God, she's an, I, I, yeah, she's an icon. I, I got to see her on Broadway as well, uh, doing, uh, oh, Rag Time. Oh, okay. Yes, that one would be. Oh, we listened. I listened to that on a on a uh, road trip recently, um, and I was so shocked at myself that I hadn't ever heard it before because it's so relevant to what's going on right now in the world. So I think that would be that would be my ultimate choice. Rag time. <laughs> okay, I've got it. I think I got that answer too a couple weeks ago. I've got a, a lot of parade and a, and I got a rag time answer uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I was able to do parade in LA uh, with three theatricals and it was life changing. I mean, it was such a moving musical to be a part of and also just the story. It's a really it's a really tough one for sure. It's definitely not <laughs> happy by any means, but. Um, the music is just so stunning. So I would love to see that one again, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we need to bring back some relevant older musicals that like maybe people of this generation haven't gotten to see. I agree. I could not agree more. Yes, yes. And then, uh, do you have any, uh, before I move on from theater, do you have any hidden talents about yourself that people wouldn't know? Um, I... Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm pretty good at accents. I'm pretty good at voices. Um, but I think the one that I sort of leaned on as, as a younger performer was um, I can whistle tone pretty well. Not like, not like Ariana Grande whistle tones, which is like unheard of. I don't know how she does it. But yeah. I can hit some pretty high notes, which I'm, I'm ever grateful for. Uh, Luckily, I don't think they're actual whistle tones because I'm pretty sure I don't have notes. <laughs> but um, but I've always really enjoyed singing as high as I possibly can. Wow, that's <laughs> a, well, yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> well, it was just something that I realized I could do because during our hairspray audition, 
the first musical I did, that was like what they wanted for one of the, the characters. Because Shelly has this moment that I don't think is on the recording where she sings like a whistle tone moment at the end of this like transition. And so I just started doing it in the audition and I was like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> well, that's cool. And um, it ended up, I ended up getting that role and it ended up being like my most favorite part of the, that show was doing that one little moment where she whistle toned <laughs> and then ran off stage. So I think ever since then I'm like, I try to, Anytime Mariah Carey or Ariana Grande comes out with a song where they use whistle tones, I'm like, okay, let's see if I can get anywhere close to this. And most of the time I can't, but sometimes I can. Yes, something to be proud of. <laughs> and, and then we talked about, uh, we talked about quarantine and like uh, taking our time to get back to normal and um, maybe not going out right now. But what's the first thing you're going to do once quarantine ends and it is safe to maybe go back out into the world? I mean, I think I would want to see a show. I would either want to see a Broadway musical or a play, or I would want to see some artist live. Yeah. I think that's what I miss the most, is just being an audience member and experiencing art in that way will always be my favorite and something that I miss so much even just going to the movies like would be awesome i, I would take that too but I, I, a live concert of some sort would be would be my ideal first big step <laughs> out of court which won't and, happen for a while but one day yeah one day and i've asked i've asked other people this because like virtual theater has become like such a big thing during this time do you think it's gonna uh stick around after live theater can safely return maybe i mean i think the cool thing about this is that it's forcing people to come together in ways that you know we haven't experienced in the past you know for a lot of the things that i've done um you know we're making like videos and you have like a small part of this video so you're sending in whatever you can to sort of create this, this bigger picture um which i think is really cool uh I think we're having to work together more and and find new ways of of creating art uh which just goes to show you know no matter what performers and people who want to create will find a way yes it, it's inspiring too yeah and it's 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 unfortunate obviously because you want to go back to the way that it was but you can't so you find a new way and i'm trying to lean into it as best that i can um because i miss creating i miss being a part of something so any way i can i i usually try to take it especially right now so yeah um i think maybe virtual musicals will stick around i think ultimately the goal is to go back to to live musicals obviously but yeah. for now i'm yeah i think it's an awesome way of, of continuing the process that is being an artist. Yes. And then uh, speaking of finding ways as performers to do things like during this time, have, have you uh, been doing anything during this time that you do want to promote or share or? No, actually. I mean, I've been, I, I think the one thing that is happening is uh, Wicked is trying to find new ways of uh, sharing important thoughts and opinions about where we're at in the world today. So that's something I've been participating in that I really love because it feels like I, I can participate in something that's actually going to cause change for the better, change for good. And so that's been really exciting. But in terms of me personally, I haven't really been, you know, singing as much or or creating as much like i'll definitely get around the piano sometimes and sing with my friends but i think it's actually been good for me because before this pandemic hit i was exhausted i was so beyond tired and sort of not myself and i think um, a positive that's come from this time is having the moment that i needed maybe a little bit too much time but I'll take it to sort of come back to who I am and to revitalize my inner self, my mental state, my emotional state to a place that feels stronger and more capable. 
And I think that that is the most important thing right now is being able to mentally stay strong in a time when you feel like everything is out of control. And so I'm hoping that I can continue using the time away to be as mentally capable and strong as possible and come back, you know, in a place where I feel like I can take anything <laughs> that the world throws at me. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what I've been doing. Um, in less, less self promoting and more inner self yeah. work. And, and that's important. It's, it's like, I feel like as a performer, when you're so tough on yourself, like you don't know when to stop sometimes. Totally. And I, you couldn't have described me more perfectly. I am a go, go, go. I've never, it's rare that I'll give myself a break. And even when you get vacations and things, your body is so tired that by the time you get that one week off, your body sometimes just shuts down because it's been going and going for so long. So I think something, and it's not just me, I think it was the world too. Like everybody just needed to stop and really take in where we're at as a society. And unfortunately it took a pandemic and so many people dying and horrible, horrible racial oppression and um, things that I don't think any of us realized we needed to come face to face with to force us to stop. But I am constantly trying to find the positive in this experience. And I think that um, us having to stop so abruptly like this, it, it happened for a reason, like I said in the beginning. And, and now we have no choice but to make a change. And I really hope with all my heart that the change is for the better because um, we are overdue for a positive moment. Yes, for sure. And then to find more inspirational things like what you've said throughout this whole hour and a half. I mean, where can people follow you on social media? Because like everyone needs this inspiration. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, well, I mean, you can follow me on my Instagram. It's at M I C C C C C five C's marked. Um, and also you can find me on Facebook. And I think I have a singer songwriter page because there was a time in my life when I was writing and singing on the piano. Uh, but I don't really check that one, but I think you can find it on Facebook. Uh, but I will say the best place to find me is Instagram. You found me there. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the one to go for. Yes. Well, fantastic. I, thank you for talking to me and thank you for sharing all your words of inspiration and for talking about Wicked with me. And of course, all thank you for asking me. That was really kind. And I'm excited to, to share my thoughts and voice with you. That It's really awesome that you're creating a, a place for artists to come and, and speak about their experiences. So thank you. I love it. It's it's been a blast. I miss I miss theater and getting to see you all perform on stage and sharing your gifts so much. So I know I miss it too. So, but I'll take it wherever I can get it. So I'm I'm glad that we spent this hour and a half together. Thanks for watching this episode of Backstage with Becca B. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Or for more exclusive content from this interview and more, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Backstage with Becca B. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give me a five-star rating. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!